Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Yes, I am thankfully very much inside. It's about two degrees with a minus 20 wind chill out there. So I'm very happy to be inside the shop today. Didn't bring any fancy lights with me. Today is about me actually getting to shoot a bow. We are now into target season here in December as we turn into January. And I wanna show you how I set up a target bow, whether you shoot in the bow hunter class like I do, or if you wanna shoot in the open or unlimited setup. So very briefly, for most sanctioned target events, or even if it's just a y'all come shoot kind of league, down at your local pro shop, here at my shop, Phillipsburg PA, Average Jack Archery Pro Shop and Range, uh, if you shoot a bow, you can shoot in our league or you can come shoot in our money shoots that we like to hold in the winter time usually in February. You can shoot something like this. This is an Athens Peak 38, so 38 inches axle to axle. You can shoot something like the new Phase 4 29 from Matthews, really tiny, a solid nine inches shorter than this bow. You can do whatever you want. Most times you are uh, restricted in arrow diameter. So for example, the Lancaster Archery Classic, which is right here in my home state of PA, uh, that'll let you shoot up to a size 27, which is the largest diameter arrow that is currently being made on the market for both carbon and aluminum. Some in the bow hunter class, like what I shoot predominantly, will restrict you to a size 23. For the outside field target archery, that's a totally different ball game. We're talking basically just indoor, maybe a little bit of 3D sprinkled in. This bow, as you see, is completely bare. It is a beautiful 2023 edition. So we do have the uh, levels here integrated into the riser. We do have an integrate rest option, although I'm going to put on a Hamsky Trinity. I want to set up this bow from start to finish as I would for the bow hunter class. I'm actually expecting a package today that's going to have like my sight, my new scope that I'm going to run for 2023 in it as well. But we can at least get talking about how I set draw length and let off because that can change if you want to shoot indoors. Um, I like to shoot maximum 60 pounds uh, for shooting indoors. My Vista 35 that's on the wall behind me here is at 70 pounds and it's a little bit too much. I should wind it down to 60. but. I'm going to play with the peak this year instead, get a real target bow feel. Now even though you can shoot whatever bow you want, the reason why most archers are going to shoot a longer axle to axle bow, and particularly a target specific one, is that they're usually a little bit slower, uh, which makes them a little bit easier on the draw cycle. Remember, you're doing 30, 60, 90 arrows in an afternoon session, depending on the type of archery that you're doing and the type of event. And that's a lot of arrows for pulling 70 pounds out of a really aggressive, say, hunting bow style with a shorter brace height. That's the next thing, brace height on this axle. Athens uh, this, uh, Peak 38 rather is close to that seven inch mark and most target bows are in that seven to seven and a half inches. Of course, the longer the bow, the more riser you have here, the heavier it is, and it's harder to move a heavy object than it is to move a really short light one. So we have a longer axle to axle length, so it makes it you know, just like a, a person walking a tightrope or on a balance beam, sticking your arms out gives you more balance, and it takes more gross motor movement to move you, say, 16th to a full inch, whereas it does if you're shooting something that's shorter and lighter. For hunting, we like light and short because we got to carry it everywhere. For target, it, I got to shoot it, put it down, walk, get my arrows, come back, pick it up, shoot it. You get the idea. Now, how I set the D loop and peep is exactly the same way I set up any bow, hunting or target. So I'm not going to show that. I will throw a link to a video of me setting up the Vista 35 from start to finish down in the description below. And that is a full setup of any kind of bow that I would do. I'm going to set up the D loop and peep off camera, at least the general approximate locations. Also going to talk about the draw length a little bit and the let off. The peak uh, for 2023 will come with an adjustable let off from 70 to 90 percent. A lot of target bows are offering now a larger range of let off options. Hunting bows are usually closer to 80 to 85, but a lot of target archers like to shoot down into 70, 75. Some even closer to 60 or 65 if they're really feeling frisky. What that means is when you're actually coming to full draw is that you have to hold more weight, which means you have to pull into the back wall harder. And a lot of target style releases are a thumb button style release like this hot shot vapor or a hinge style release. And because of that, you really want to kind of feel that push pull as you really get into the back wall in order to hold that pressure back. You shoot 90% let off, you're going to come back to full draw and just, ugh, just kind of sit there. And that little bit, that 16th to 8th of an inch of draw length change can drastically change a 20 yard shot, meaning it's either in the scoring ring or it's not. For hunting situations, we're talking minute of deer here. You know, we're talking that three, four inch circle is great for a 20, 30 yard whitetail shot. But a three, four inch circle for a 20 yard Vegas round, now you're really giving up some points there uh, on the X or even the nine ring if you're really unlucky. 
We want to try to maximize as many points as we possibly can, hence the fat arrows, the fancy style of releases, and the lower let off. So I'm going to start working on this bow. I know I want my draw length between 30 and a half and 31 inches. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to probably set this at 31 and run it to the 75% let off. That'll shorten the draw length a little bit because I have to move the draw stop closer to me. It'll make the draw length a little bit shorter, but I don't need it to be 31 inches. I want to be between 30 and a half and 31 and the Peak 38 or any of the Athens lineup will allow me to do that. There are a lot of other bows out there that'll let you do this as well. Uh, PSE allows you to do it. The Hoyt target bows allow you to do it. Uh, the Matthews system with their modules, you can change uh, the whole module out to get a different let off feel. But I like having that rotating module. Bowtech will do it as well right here on the cam. All right, lots of tinkering later, and I'll talk through it as we're actually gonna take this bow down and shoot it. Now, I haven't paper tuned, I haven't done anything like that. I just wanna set it up and shoot it at 20 yards, get it sighted in, and see how it feels. I threw on a little bit of blue for color, the D-loop. I usually have a uh, blue cord here for an aluminum pin sight light. We'll start here at the front and work our way back. Um, it is super important, at least in my opinion, no matter what class you're gonna shoot in, bow hunter or the open unlimited classes, men's and women's, that you have a light set to whatever sights you have. Now, even the cheapest of sights will come with an optional thread here to install a light. Now, you can do a little twist one that goes on here, that'll work. If you can get something like this, you can go as high in as like a zebra sight light and really dial in exactly the pin brightness that you want. A 19 thousandths pin, which is what's in here, is the most common size. Some guys like running something small like a 15 or a 10, and some people with really bad vision need something as big as a 29. But I run 19 thousandths. This is just a cheap sight here. This is a GWS AR19 uh, single pin. Uh, I'm gonna actually put a B3 exact rise target sight on here with a Viper archery scope. Uh, if I wanna run it for open, I would run a six power lens in here, and I would put a clarifier into this Hamsky Insight Peep. So talking about the sight and the peep, let's start there. This sight here in the bow hunter class, you can't run a lens. So there is nothing in here, no glass whatsoever. If you want to run in the open class, you can put a magnifying lens in here, which of course, uh, uh, brings your target closer to your eye, helps that aiming point, uh, whether you're indoors or out. In that case though, because you are now magnifying, it's like a pair of binoculars, you need a diopter back here or a clarifying lens to the layman, if you will. Back in here then to clear up the blurriness now that you've added here. So if you get a two power lens, sometimes you can get away without running a clarifying lens back here. Uh, but I'm gonna run a six power up front for the open because uh, I could shoot that outside for 3D as well. And I'll run a B clarifier. There's a whole bunch of different diopters and all of that is dependent on your draw length. Um, although most people shoot an A plus, A minus, or a B clarifier, unless you're really running a high power lens and need like a C or D at the back end. A verifier, which is different than a clarifier, which is only in the peep and not in the side housing, is just to clear up the pins. So you can run just a verifier with no uh, magnification lens up here for the bow hunter setup. And all the verifier does is it makes your pins more clear. However, what is past your pins gets a little bit more blurry because it's taking the focus away from out here at the target and putting the focus here on the pin. You kind of have to play with that, how you want that to run. Um, for me, uh, with my uh, corrective lenses, wearing glasses or contacts, I could get away with a verifier in bow hunter class and maybe help clear up. I have an astigmatism in my right eye pretty bad to help clear up the pin, but then the target's blurry. How do I want to do that? For outdoor 3D, when I really want to see the scoring ring on that foam critter downrange, I probably would not want to run a verifier because I can't, what the term is, rack focus. That's a camera term where we go from this is in focus to this is in focus and this is in focus focus and this is in focus. They do this in camera shots a lot. If you ever see two you know, private investigators in a car together, they'll put focus on the guy in the passenger seat and then focus on the guy in the driver's seat. Watch it next time you see like a Jason Bourne type film. When you are shooting though, you really want to pick one, right? You really don't want to try to put both in focus unless your eyes are good enough to do that. Mine are not, and I'll imagine that most of you at home also don't have clear enough eyesight to be able to put pin and target in the same plane together. They're just too far away from each other. Some people will argue you have to focus on the pin. Some people say you have to let the pin go blurry and let the target come in clear. For me, because of my astigmatism, I get a lot of star bursting. So the pin's not a perfect bright circle. It actually kind of looks like an E, a capital E, kind of coming out to the left. That really throws off my target aiming point. So I really prefer to focus on the pin and let the target go blurry. 
your mileage may vary, and of course, everybody has their own opinion on that. Going along with that though, and kind of a cheat to help you with both, and something that I take into effect, is we like to always try to match up our side housing, right, to fit into the diameter of our peep. We don't want a big amount of air around the peep ring and the target housing, uh, but we also don't want it so small that we can't actually see that green or see the bubble level, so on and so forth. However, if you are like me and you shoot the bow hunter class and you can't have a clarifier or you're really struggling to get a verifier to work, try running a smaller diameter peep on the inside. So this is the Hamsky Insight peep, which allows me with just a tool. I don't need a bow press. Now it is expensive, but I don't need a bow press. I can actually take out and I can run different apertures. So the inside system from Hamsky, the red one is just apertures. The blue one is the peep, the apertures, and some clarifying lenses. Of course, the price point goes up when you start putting glass back here. But when you start running this as a insight system with just the apertures, it goes from a 1 32nd up to a 5 32nd diameter. I can leave this peep into one bow and change out, just using a little screw here, and change out the apertures on the inside. So I can run it really tiny. Right now it's at a 3 32nd, which is pretty small, not a whole lot of light coming in. However, the smaller amount of light just with a camera, the more in focus everything is around the camera. The same thing is true of the peep. The less amount of light that goes into that aperture, the more in focus my pin becomes. So I don't have to run that lens, I don't have to run a verifier. Now, I am getting a little bit too tight here around there. I'm actually covering up the entirety of the green. I can still see my bubble, however. So I'm able to get away with uh, not having some uh, really egregious left, right, up, down misses because I'm not aligned with the sight housing and the peep but it allows me to get away with shooting glasses or contacts, helps clear up my astigmatism, and if I'm ready, if I, this was my hunting bow and I was gonna target shoot with it, all I have to do is unscrew that, leave it the biggest hole possible, uh, which is the uh, quarter inch, or I can neck it down to 5 30 seconds or 3 16 or whatever the size may be. So let's talk about the rest, which is the next thing here. This is a Hamsky Trinity Hunter. I've been running this for years. I don't have the cage on it. Some guys like shooting a blade rest. Some people like shooting a drop away. You can get away with a whisker biscuit if you're just kind of going and shooting your local 3D courses or your local leagues. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I like to compete for money. I like to go to some big shoots headed to Lancaster Archery Classic here at the end of January. And I like to run a really robust drop boy style rest. Hamsky says, never let me down. I run the hybrid hunter on my hunting bow. And here we have the Trinity on my target setup. The uh, stabilizers, these are Bow Freak stabilizers made right here in central PA. Uh, I have an 11 inch out the front and, and you can have whatever length you want. I have an eight inch out the back. Now, the length of stabilizer for bow hunter has to be 12 inches or shorter. That includes the weights from the point of contact with the bow. Sometimes the back is also restricted, uh, but in this case where I'm headed, it's not, even though I'm still gonna run a shorter bar. If you shoot in the open or limited classes, this could be a 36 inch bar. It doesn't matter, and you could run as much weight as you would like. Uh, since I'm gonna shoot this in the bow hunter class, I'm gonna stick with shorter bars and just play with the weights here and there. Well, I think that's enough flapping my gums. Let's uh, take these arrows here. These are uh, Easton Eclipse 2712s. They are super fat. I got a glue in point up here. Sometimes in the bow hunter class, you gotta be careful. You have to shoot a screw in point. But where I'm headed for paper shooting this uh, this winter, I'm allowed to use a glue in point. Shooting a three fletch, uh, boning uh, X veins. You can shoot a four fletch. You can shoot feathers. You can shoot whatever you want. Doesn't really matter. You want as much stability as possible because it's a very short 20 yard distance. So these are set up with as much helical as I can get them on my Bits and Burger jig. I am shooting with a Gunstar blinder uh, because I have really bad double vision. I am right eye dominant, even though I'm left handed, so I do shoot right handed, uh, but even still, I still have pretty bad double vision. Uh, you can get the double vision blocker if you have that with both eyes open uh, that sticks onto the scope. I've tried that, it doesn't work for me, so I run a blinder here. And you can get this either left handed or right handed. Unfortunately, it means you have to shoot with a hat. If you don't want to shoot with a hat, you can run an eye patch of some sort. We do that with kids here in the store that struggle uh, with dominant dominant eye, particularly when they're young, they don't really know one way or the other. Uh, but since I'm right eye dominant, I'm gonna run the blinder. All right, so I'm just gonna kinda shoot and prattle on here a little bit. Yeah, I know the lighting is terrible. I know the echo is also horrible, but um, we're just gonna have to deal with it together. <laughs> uh, so I think I've got her sighted in here. I shot about seven or eight arrows. Uh, we're gonna do a few warm up ins here, and we're just gonna kinda talk through, particularly shooting indoor right now. Um, so really, first of all, 
It's really well lit down here for a range anyhow. I've shot in some absolute basements, um, but still the lighting will change. Like if you're in lane three or four in my range down here, um, you'll be way better lit on your pin than you where, where I am right here in lane two because you have the bulkhead here for the ducting. So this is where it's super important to be able to play uh, with your sight light and really dial in the pin brightness uh, that you want. Um, so I'm just going to shoot here, do a couple of, uh, maybe do two warm-up bins here on the fresh target face and see how we do. I feel like I could go a little bit more let off, run it at 70% uh, and just tighten up that draw length just a little bit. I feel a little bit sloppy maybe on the back end now that I've done about a dozen arrows through it effectively. So I don't know, let's uh, brighten up my pin a little bit here and let's take a couple shots. I'm going to kind of prattle my way through this. I'm dipping out the bottom a little bit. Um, that's a 10. Left, right's perfect. Dipping out the bottom again. I'm just gonna give it, give it like another half yard here, if that. So we're shooting 27s is great. Usually I shoot 22s or 23 diameter arrows, and I would be losing those points there. Also working on this, training this peep round. These Hamsky peeps are so big, they got a lot of twist to them when you first start out. Yeah, that's better. It's been a hot minute since I shot. <laughs> so I'm definitely shaky. Bow's big, lots of stabilizer weight, heavy sight, rest, you know, and so on and so forth. It balances so well, but I am definitely out of shooting shape. So I'm gonna go pull those. That last half a yard, I think, is going to help me out, particularly as I get shooting. If you shoot in the bow hunter class, you can't touch your sight once you begin scoring rounds. Um, whereas in open, if you start to kind of dip and lose it, you can give it a few clicks uh, to help yourself out throughout. Um, but when you're also shooting those big, heavy stabilizers, you really definitely want that. Shooting the short bars is not nearly as important. Um, but yeah, left, right looks great. Uh, the clarity through that peep is doing really well. Just got to give it a little twist there before I shoot, which is okay when you're first settling in a pair of strings. So that was a 10-10X there, all at six o'clock. Uh, so they're all low, but that's all right. That X was beautiful there at the last minute. So I think I'm gonna stick with my sight at this uh, particular juncture. And uh, I gotta remember to turn my sight light off so I don't drain my batteries. But that's a, that's a pretty good start there for practicing anyway. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just bopping out the bottom. It's a perfect vertical plane. I'm not, sometimes I have like a V or a W or even like an infinity symbol a little bit, figure eight. Uh, but right now it's just out the bottom. So that little half yard there kind of saved me there at that shot. That one's almost a little bit too tall. <laughs> it's kind of the give and take, right? If you end up shooting high, then you're definitely gonna be high. Uh, but I, I, can, I mean, that's still a 10, but I'm still gonna be struggling, I know as the ends go on. Yeah, draw length just feels just a touch on the long side. I think I might uh, take the draw stops all the way in there a little bit. It goes more like 70% let off. All right, so went and moved that all the way into 70% let off. So I'm gonna shoot at a different target here. So I don't get a hole I don't want. See what my change is. Yeah, I like that. I like that a little bit more. I actually didn't change it that much. All right, back to shooting the good target. Yeah, I like that a little bit more. Definitely 70%, definitely wants to come off the wall really easily. But yeah, I feel like I'm getting better pressure. And you can do this, right? Like, see, now, now it looks like I'm shooting high. Oh, I'm just gonna give it that back a little bit. With these cheap sights like this, it's uh, hard, you know, it's just a little sticky slider, it's all in friction. Um, it's a high 10 there, right at 12 o'clock. It's money right there. 
yeah, it just tightens me up just a little bit. And that's why I like bows that have a rotating module, A, I can play with draw length, B, then also adjustable let off. So, you know, if I wanted, I could run this at a really short draw length or a shorter draw length and run it at 90% let off, have the exact same draw length, but have a super deep valley if I really wanted to. Uh, you could do this then to set up for your hunting bow. So you have the same exact draw length feel, um, or same draw, yeah, the same draw length feel when you're at full draw, but then you can run it 90% for your hunting situation and then run it out to 70% for target. It's not bad. Got to work on my uh, leveling too, my left and right, but that'll come with time. All right, so now we've done a whole bunch of ends off camera because I'm running out of battery, truth be told. <laughs> But we're at N10 now, and outside of that one really egregious nine, we're actually doing very well for ourselves here. I'm definitely starting to tire out. Uh, I'm not used to holding this much mass weight, uh, but the 60 pounds feels phenomenal. Uh, everything's working out super duper well. Hopefully I didn't just jinx myself here. Uh, and we're at 14 X's, which um, I usually shoot in the mid to high teens of X count. So um, ideally I'd like to push like 20, 22 X's um, and shoot like a 298, 299, maybe even a 300 if I'm real lucky. Uh, but right now we're on pace with just one drop nine. So let's see how we finish strong here. little tall, that's yeah, a 10, a little tall. I'm just bouncing, I'm bouncing vertically. Like I'm not having like all of my targets and I'll show you, I have one that's kind of a funky left, but everything else is perfectly vertical. And that's just messing with my stabilizer weight. It's really figuring it out. I might need less weight on the front end. I'm only running two ounces on the short bar, uh, but we might, we might not need any weight out front. Maybe we need to put more on the back. I don't know, but it's feeling really, really comfortable. 60 pounds, I mean 62 pounds out of this peak. Woo, that was a little bit hotter than I wanted. <laughs> that one's a little bit left. Still a 10, but it's a little on, it's on the uh, left edge there. Would like to have shot a couple X's this in. Let's see if we can polish an X off here at the end. Don't think that's an X. I think we just shot three straight tens. <laughs> oh, well, let's go down and take a look. So uh, not half bad here. I stuck this arrow up in here, up in that nine hole that I had shot there the, you know, early on in the round. Um, just to show you that, look at the vertical nature of all this. I have one left, which is right here. Uh, definitely a real nice 10 though, still, you know, nothing really uh, super egregious, but all of my near misses are all vertical with the exception of that nine right there. Um, this one was an obvious miss, meaning an exception, but this is the only left one. This one here that I thought was really far over uh, is still inside and is still an X. We have a 10 X 10 to finish it off. Um, so I would have liked to finish off with three X's, but using tally marks here, I got 15 X's and we shot ourselves a 299 out of 300. So not the world's worst score <laughs> for the very first time ever picking up the peak. Um, we'll see if we want to shoot it through paper and actually see what kind of tear we get if we want to try to get more forgiveness out of the bow. But I mean, right now with how, I mean, there's no way it was level each and every single shot. And the fact that we only had one that was to the left, I will take vertical issues no problem because that's all just bounce. That's all just kind of figuring in the draw length, your let off. Um, I really like it at 70% right now. I think that feels really good. I think I'm going to stick with it. And uh, yeah, I could not be happier with this uh, first go around with the Peak 38 Lancaster Archery Classic. Here we come. I just want to further illustrate what I'm talking about here. So you'll notice that this is all vertical, all vertical tears. Same thing with this guy right here. We definitely were living inside of the 10 ring here uh, with one, you know, 12 and, uh, and a couple down here in the six. And then of course up here, we had the, uh, the gnarly nine <laughs> way up in here. Uh, and then, you know, mostly we were, we were hanging around in here. We had that one egregious off to the left. This is also the third targets. So I was shooting bottom, middle, top. Um, then on a standard Vegas face, it's usually top, you know, 
know, this way. I like to shoot, and there's a pro tip for you, or at least an, an amateur pro tip. You notice the light coming off of my arrows. You'll notice that it's coming down. Depending on how the range is lit, you get some really egregious shadows. So if you're going to shoot a Vegas face that has, you know, the one, two, three, I never start out at the top one. I always finish on that one. I usually shoot one, two, and three, so I don't get any shadows from an arrow sticking up here uh, in my sight picture. I'll always shoot the bottom left, then the bottom right, then I'll go up to the second target, which is up at the top. Uh, so just a little pro tip there for you. And also the same thing true when I'm shooting these, uh, these uh, spotlights or stoplights, if you will. I'll shoot the bottom, the middle, and the top, which kind of struggles then when you get to the end of an end and you're trying to hold your bow up the highest. Uh, but I think really in the end it actually works out the best. Um, and you just, I don't know, I just like the, I don't like those shadows on my sight picture. I don't think it looks good at all. Well, that's all for me in today's video. If you have any questions on building a target bow or how to target shoot or so on and so forth, I will try my best. You can reach out to us at Average Jack Archery on Facebook and Instagram. You can send us an email, averagejackarchery at gmail.com. Or if you live in the Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania, Central Pennsylvania area, or want to travel from a different state, we service a lot of bows from a lot of different places across the country. We are your local dealer here for Matthews, Athens, PSE, and Bear, as well as several different crossbow brands. We carry lit of different arrows and particularly gold tip and victory we can definitely ship something to your door if you're interested in supporting a small shop like ours i hope you're able to get outside enjoy the sport of archery archery hunting if you so choose definitely enjoy god's beautiful creation whether it's indoors or out and we'll get to see you next time